Holly, folks. Oh, gee. I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker News you can trust. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. If you are tuning in for the first time, we want you to stay. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. These three things help build the show, our subject matter, our topic of interest. Of interest is biker clubs, motorcycle club etiquette, biker news. This is the Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker news, you can trust. And we look at the motorcycle club social construct. And how to navigate your way successfully through it such that you enjoy a great motorcycle club life. Motorcycle clubs are forever. Motorcycle clubs are not about I. Motorcycle clubs are about we. And the sooner you learn that, the happier your motorcycle club existence will be. Yeah, yeah. Today I'll be traveling, heading to uh, Louisiana, where we will be at the Biker Roundup. Uh, what's it called? It's called the National Round Bikers Roundup. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And let me hold this up. Oh, by the way. Uh, you guys do know that we simulcast our podcast, uh, and this is the podcast that's going on. Wherever you get podcasts, you can get the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos, and uh, we want you to go there and check it out. This is what our podcast platform looks like. Really, you know, unimpressive, but uh, that is it. Uh, let me see here. So I was trying to show you this. I will be going here, 45 National, 45th National Bikers Roundup, August 2nd through the 7th. I'll be here. This is like um, the black, um, the black bikers, uh, Sturgis, if you will. Be about 50,000 people or more here. Uh, it's been going on for 45 years. It's hard to believe that it's, been going on for 45 years. I think the very first one, I guess, uh, might have been in 1980-something. I guess we'd have to count backwards to know when 45 years was. Uh, my math people need to uh, get on that for me. Where are my math people at? Uh, so 2022 minus 45 is 1977. Wow, is it that old? So the first one uh, was started, I believe this whole thing was started by a guy named Breezy, if I if I remember right. But the first one uh, only had 20 people show up. And now there are tens of thousands that go there. It's being hosted by the Nubian Cruisers uh, United BR, the Nubian Cruisers United NOLA. With, I think that stands for New Orleans or something. New Orleans, Louisiana. Is that what NOLA stands for? Stone Cold Knights, MC. Street Predators, MC. The Flight Crew, MC. Block Burners, BR. Uh, Wild Bunch. All these motorcycle clubs are hosting the Roundup. It's like uh, $30 to get in the door. Uh, and and it, it goes for like a whole week. Uh, we've been doing this. I've been doing it since 1997. So damn near 30 years that I've been going. Um, I've only missed a couple in that time. So I will be taking my RV and I don't care what you say. I'm not camping out on the ground, laying down in the dirt at, almost 60 years old. But my very first one, that's exactly what I did. I rode my motorcycle there 
And uh, we got a hotel room in this guy, Brother Bob, who taught me all about how to do motorcycling across country. And we got an RV. I mean, we got a, uh, not even sleeping bags. And we slept on the ground um, until we, we found our uh, roundup wives. You, you might find a roundup wife. Uh, and then that's, that's who I had a school teacher, man. I wonder if I still have that video of her. Oh my gosh. She was fine back then. And that's what you did. You, 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 you hunted when, when I was that age, I was a predator. You hunted women and oh my God. I mean, that, 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 that's, that, that's what my first part of my biking life was. I wasn't trying to be a president or any of that. I was just out on the scout, as we used to say in the cowboy days, out on the scout. Uh, Nola, somebody told me, yes, NOLA stands for New Orleans Black Sabbath North Shore Reppin. What's up, VP, North Shore, my North Shore Black Sabbath chapter. NOLA stands for New Orleans. I knew that. Don't be acting like I didn't know that. I had, I had surmised that it stood that for that. Uh, but, um, man, now that I'm old, you know, I just go to the roundup and sit in my rocking chair in front of my RV and watch everyone go by. But there was a time when I was the finest thing at the thing. I remember, oh my gosh. And then the, the women back then hardly wore nothing at all. I mean, it was a show back in the day. It's become more family oriented now, as I guess as we've gotten older. But in the old days, bro, women were walking around that thing with barely nothing on at all. Just to barely nothing. And you just, you just, you just, you just, you, 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 you just you'd. What did you do? You you'd. Okay. You you'd. You were your best you, you could be. You were ewing. You were Lee ewing you. Trying to spread yourself upon the lovely femininity of creation. This is what you did. And most of my biker life was like that in the beginning. I'm, I was a heathen. I, I'm now I'm saved. I'm, I'm a much better person now. Thank you. Oh my goodness, man. So, uh, God's beloved brother Bob, such an awesome man. Yes, God's beloved. You know, you remember him? Brother Bob is the man who taught me how to ride cross country, how to put down big miles on a motorcycle. He taught me how to ride a gold wing. He made me the nomad that I have become. It, it, could you believe that Big Cell from Fast Harley's Only had the nerve to disrespect me on Facebook? Before we get our, our first story, I, I this he tried to disrespect me on Facebook. I had to just about cuss his young behind out. It was horrible. Let me let me pull it up for you. So he made some kind of oh silly statement about these. Oh, let me turn that off there. Uh, he made some oh silly statement that started out like this, talking about now who in their right mind would talk about Indian motorcycles? You know that's like talking about victories. What's wrong with y'all? Man, they're not going to stop until it looks exactly like what they say that they are better than. Sir Indian, 
You come close, but you'll never be a Harley Davidson. <laughs> and so all these people chimed in about it, and I said, you said you'll never be a Harley Davidson. I said, it don't want to be no darn raggedy-ass Harley Davidson. It looks better, runs faster, lasts longer, and costs less to operate. You better ask somebody. So he says, so says someone that doesn't ride more than 5,000 miles a year. This is what Big Sal said to me, the man who taught him how to ride. I said, I said, oh, even if I only ride more, if you, even if I only ride less than 5,000 miles a year, you'll still need to ride 100,000 miles a year for the next 20 years to catch up to the miles I got just backing up to the curb. Talk to me after you've been biking longer than 11 years, son. I might let you off my breast milk then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And he comes back and says, sounds good, old man. I did my research, and it comes back that you were never a cross-country yonder getter. In fact, I have proof that you haven't even crossed 22 straights, states. He has proof that I haven't even crossed 22 states. Now, don't get me wrong. Your silent part in one of the greatest biker movies is iconic. My silent part in Biker Boys. My silent part, he says. <laughs> but even that is not enough to sustain your existence. So, my friend, leave the riding to us highway bullies and put a seatbelt on your podcast chair so you don't fall out of it and leave the real motorcycle riding to me, the real motorcycling, he says. Oh, and before you ask, my facts come from, well, if needed later, I'll reveal. Sleep tight. It's after 8 p.m. I know your medicine has surely kicked in by now. You people, you people with these young, these old people jokes. I said, my dear son, I believe it was you who taught me how to podcast. We want to talk about seatbelts on podcast chairs. And it is your so-called riding career that's in question and jeopardy, not mine. Videos of my cross-country pursuits are quite prevalent online, as it is true that I am a content creator. You are the one riding for dollars like an escort on Backpage.com. Now listen, son, don't make me race your butt cross country and chastise you like the heathen ungrateful child you are. I will administer corporal punishment across the seat of my victory vision while that hog you got that can't keep an engine in it without having to go back to the Harley for repairs every trip lets you down again and again trying to keep up with a real modern-day air-cooled American-made V-twin ridden by a G unlike that Japanese-made Harley you're riding. So sit down. You had a little event down in Florida where a couple of people showed up, and now you think you're a promoter. You better stop before I call the mayor and have your whole event shut down next year for talking crazy to the legend of motorcycling. Mm -hmm. That's what I told him. He said, man, oh, man, now that would be something to see. An old man with a vision and no victory. But hey, my friend, we will catch each other out there, and when we do, it's on, sir. Laughing my effing A off. I love it, and I love you, OG, and I said, I hope you know that I love you too. Yeah! Yeah! Man, tell you what, they be trying you, man. They be trying you. Uh, but anyway, our first news story today is a sad one. Um, I don't have a lot of information on this one. I am told that this um, unfortunate um, gentleman may be a president of um, the Buffalo Soldiers uh, out there in Victorville area. Uh, which is um, also part of the Inland Empire, which I believe is the biggest county in the United States of America. It is huge. Um, and so we have, unfortunately, this story that happened, I believe, last 
Friday night or was it Saturday night? Um, so uh, he was known as Billy Bob Thornton, and he was he was unfortunately killed uh, in a hail of gunfire. And uh, let me see. There's a few different stories, but but uh, I've been getting I've been getting this in my inbox a lot and a lot of calls on this. So uh, I wanted to wait until we had a little more information, but we really don't have any information at all uh, other than the fact that he was killed. So let's uh, we'll start with the first story, man shot and killed. So this happened. Uh, it was first published this one four days ago. Man shot and killed Friday night in Old Town, Victorville. Uh, Victorville, a stretch of 7th uh, Street in Old Town, Victorville, has been closed for over 12 hours as the story came out. Uh, after a man was shot and killed Friday night, it happened about 10, 11 p.m. on July 29, 2022, in the area of 6th and 7th Streets. Emergency personnel arrived and located at least one person suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. The male was transported to a trauma center where despite life-saving measures, he was pronounced deceased. Um, they didn't identify him at that time. It was an, uh, an article a day or two later. Witnesses said that after the shooting, the suspect's vehicle uh, was involved in a crash, leaving behind the bumper and a license plate. Uh, sheriff's officers, officials have not yet released any details and have not responded to an email and query about a possible suspect being arrested. So that's the first news they had. As of 10.30 a.m. the following day, a hard road closure remained in place along 7th Street between Forest Avenue and Street, we, Street uh, C Street while the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Homicide Team conducted the investigation. You can see there are uh, several pictures that they take. It's It was a developing story. Okay, so... Uh, a couple days later, uh, they actually had his picture, and this is on his Facebook page. Uh, so that's how I was able to verify that it was the same person. Um, so anyway, uh, they they identified him as 38 year old Raymond Pettis, and uh, my gosh, such a such a young young person, 38 years old. To me, a 38 year old is still a baby, and. Um, um, a 38 year old, um, um, uh, person, young person, uh, barely even having lived life is, um, is, um, gone. And that is so unfortunate. It's just sad. Uh, man. There's so much more I have done since I was 38. As a matter of fact, I hadn't done any of the stuff you guys know me for. I hadn't written any books. I don't even think I had made the movie Biker Boys yet. I hadn't been, I wasn't a president of a motorcycle club yet. None of that. None of the fun stuff. I um, I had gotten my degree. Uh, there was so much I hadn't done. There's so much life to live. To see a young person gone. I, now, when I was 38, of course, I thought I was just the old man of the sea. But to me, a 38-year-old is, is still really a baby. So my heart is broken uh, when I see you young guys and gals um, leave uh, way too prematurely. So the Officials are continuing to search for murder suspect. On Friday, July 29, 2022, deputies assigned to the Victorville Police Department were on an unrelated law enforcement incident and responded to the 15500 block of the 7th Street after the police themselves heard multiple gunshots. Upon arriving, deputies located a large crowd gathered at the location. Officials said several subjects in the crowd directed the deputies to the victim who was in a parking lot, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Raymond Pettis was transported to a local hospital, as you know, where he was pronounced dead after life-saving measures were administered. A short time after, right after the shooting, deputies were involved in a vehicle pursuit with a subject who fled the scene of the shooting. I guess they caught him, ultimately. 
the subject stopped his vehicle on the I-15 on the uh, I-15 freeway near Roy Rogers Drive. He was interviewed and later released. State of the Sheriff's News release. Homicide detail detectives are investigating and officials confirm the suspect or suspects have not yet been identified. So, of course, they're asking that anyone with information about this case contact the uh, detective. So after uh, going through all of uh, this, uh, and I found his uh, Facebook page and then and this picture, which is the same picture as the one in the uh, newspaper. That's how how I verified uh, that this was the same person. So he seems to be known as Billy Bob on um, Billy Bob Thornton on his Facebook page. And uh, uh, as you can see, his club affiliation is is on his his vest. And I am told, I, I haven't independently verified this, but I'm told that he was a president. And uh, we have a, a lot of folks that we know in many of the Buffalo Soldiers organizations. There, there happen to be several uh, Buffalo Soldiers uh, motorcycle club operating uh, units. They don't all operate as the same unit. Uh or the same nation, but combined, they're one of the biggest motorcycle club organizations in the United States, especially among black clubs. I believe they, I read somewhere, they they have upwards of 2,000 members um, combined. So it's a big club um, and uh, that, that, that shares the same name, although not always the same leadership as I understand it. So uh, anyone with information about the case is asked to contact Detective Sean Thurman or Sergeant Justin Giles at the Specialized Investigation Division at 909-890-4904. Officer, or callers can also remain anonymous and contact the WE tip at 800-78-CRIME. 800-78-CRIME or www.wetip.com www.wetip.com and the Special Investigations Unit number is 909-890-4904 so uh, I've searched uh, several uh, places um, and um, there, there are several stories about him, even this one uh, from two days ago. And the story is the same. They still don't know uh, and haven't found out who may have uh, killed this man or how many people or whatever the case may be. Um, already, they have him listed on the National Gun Violence uh, Memorial. Um, I, I didn't know such a thing existed, but there's someone somewhere that takes down the name and information and stuff of people killed to gun violence. It's the National Gun Violence um, at gunmemorial.org. And there his name is Lost to Gun Violence on July 29 in Victorville. Uh, and I guess these are um, some news sources. I guess these are the same news sources um, that I was looking at. Wow, interesting. I haven't clicked these, but I would imagine that's what they are. Um, he does, and this is the obituary, and his obituary is not up yet, but um, th these are things I, I just didn't know were out there. Raymond Pettis obituary and other things. So uh, this is uh, Obit's Wikipedia, believe it or not. And uh, they say... Uh, Authorities are continuing to search uh, for the person or persons responsible for the homicide on the 29th of July. It's it's just amazing that they have all of this information. Uh, they say his obituary is not out yet, but uh, you can check back for the information you are looking for. We are currently waiting to receive Pettis's full obituary, saying farewell to someone we love and appreciate is never easy. So they, 
I, I guess they're already prepared to put his obituary up and all these things. All these kind of organizations exist that that uh, you don't know of unless you're trying to, you know, research and find out things about people or whatever. There's a lot that's out there, man. So, uh, um, oh, somebody says, uh, oh, so Buffalo Soldiers, um, uh, who are the Buffalo Soldiers um, and who were they in history? I, I think that's an interesting question to bring up. Um, uh, let me see. Let me go back. Um, someone said uh, Buffalo Soldiers are the are BS are the most proactive community orients MC in um, SCMI in Ohio. Buffalo Soldiers are one one thing about the Buffalo. We have the exact same uh, uh, initials BSMC. So a lot of times uh, uh, people will kind of get our two organizations mixed up. Uh, somebody said they were named after black air pilots. No, that was the Tuskegee, uh, the, 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 the Tuskegee airmen and, uh, the Buffalo soldiers were around a lot longer than the Tuskegee airmen. There is a motorcycle club named after the Tuskegee airmen. So the Buffalo soldiers, in case you, for those of you who don't know, was a black regiment of infantry, uh, um, most notably the 10th Cavalry. And uh, there was another unit, too. But uh, I think the most notable one was the 10th Cavalry. And they fought the Plains and Indian Wars, uh, in fact. And the Indians named them Buffalo Soldiers because they had woolly hair like uh, the buffalo that roamed the Plains, which which there are buffalo, well, there are really no buffalo that are native to the United States of America. We don't have Buffalo here. We have bison, the proper name of Buffalo or bison. So they would actually be properly named bison soldiers, but uh, they were named the Buffalo soldiers. And here's a funny thing. Uh, the Buffalo soldiers, the only reason we even know that the Buffalo soldiers existed is because of the diary of one officer uh, that 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 was left and it was a very short diary and the buffalo soldiers were in uh, racially segregated units back uh, i guess sometime after the civil war and these racially segregated units were run by uh, white officers and it was that one white officer i believe he was a colonel who wrote his account of the buffalo soldiers which is why we ever really ever knew that they existed. And then later on, people would, would, would report from, uh, or would, would, would share their photos and stuff inside of uh, their attics and things. And that's how we started to actually get real pictures and stuff of Buffalo soldiers. And uh, they have a very storied history. In fact, uh, during the time that they were making all those spaghetti Westerns and they call them spaghetti Westerns because they were made in Italy. Uh, a lot of those Westerns in the in the 60s, they were called spaghetti Westerns because they were actually shot in Italy with all white actors, with no black people in them at all. And if you were to see those shows, you would see like um, black people existed in America during the time of uh, the Revolutionary War, the slavery. Then in the cowboy days, we disappeared and then we came back in Jim Crow. I mean, if you was watching the movies. And I used to always wonder, well, why aren't there any black cowboys? And come to find out, black cowboys were of the among the first cowboys ever. Uh, and there were only about fifteen to twenty five thousand cowboys that ever existed, and one third of them were black. So these are things you learn because they don't teach this in school. And one of the things that's very interesting is you will watch a lot of those spaghetti westerns. And you will see the cowboys fighting the Indians on the plains. And you see all these white dudes riding with um, uh, with 10th Cavalry. You'll see that. All those movies were made with all those white actors riding and fighting the Indians with under the 10th Cavalry banner. And if you know history, you know that movie is about the Buffalo Soldiers who 
who were an all-black fighting regiment that had um, a white officer in charge. So it's just funny how uh, history can be whitewashed, as it were. Um, and so there are a lot of Buffalo Soldier regiments out there. Some are all horse regiments, uh, and some are um, biker club regiments, and so forth and so on. There are lots and lots of Buffalo Soldiers units, regiments out there that do uh, biking, charity. Uh, they ride together in clubs. Uh, so you can, and, and, and it is something that uh, uh, folks are very proud of. Uh, the Buffalo Soldiers are a, a very proud organization, and uh, they do incredible things for the community. So, I'm always I've always got a uh, uh, a thing in my heart for them, um, because of uh, their storied history. Buffalo Soldiers Wiki. I wonder if there's more to the story. Let's see. Uh, Buffalo Soldiers originally members of the, yeah, let's do this. Let's just uh, do a little education here. Buffalo Soldiers originally members of the 10th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army formed September 21, 1866, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The nickname was given to the colored cavalry by Native American tribes who fought them in the Indian Wars. The term eventually became synonymous with all African American regiments formed in 1866. So here are the cavalry regiments. They were the 9th Cavalry. Uh, I knew there were more. 9th Cavalry, 10th Cavalry, I believe was the first one. 24th Infantry Regiment. So these guys were, Buffalo Soldiers were originally cavalry, but they had infantry regiments, the 24th, the 25th, and the 2nd, 38th Infantry Regiment. And they actually carried this term, Buffalo Soldiers, all the way into uh, World War II, believe it or not. Although several African-American regiments were raised during the Civil War as part of the Union Army, including the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry and many United States Colored Troops regiments, the Buffalo Soldiers were established by Congress as the first peacetime all-black regiments in the regular United States Army. On September 6, 2005, Mark Matthews, the oldest surviving Buffalo Soldier, died. Wow! September 6, 2005. At the age of 111, he was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. So, um, you know, you guys can read up a lot about them. But they were the ones, the Buffalo Soldiers, were the ones who won the West. Just in case you didn't know, uh, now you do know. Uh, here's some really cool pictures of uh, a Buffalo Soldiers regiment. Uh, but the only reason we really know anything about these guys Oh, oh I, they fought with General John J. Pershing. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, and these guys, they were doing their thing. So when you see Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Clubs, um, this is the, um, this is uh, uh, the um, place that, that they come from. So these are, there are many Buffalo Soldier rev regiments out there. Uh, motorcycle clubs. Um, the, the the it is one of the biggest black motorcycle clubs in the United States uh, with over 140 chapters and now 5,000 over 5,000 members now. So when I first read this many years ago, uh, they had like 2,000 members. So it's a it's a big big club. First club founded by Ken Thomas. Uh, a Chicago police officer in 1993 or 1994. Uh, they're huge, man. So we're we're sorry to see a uh, young Buffalo Soldier's brother uh, meet his demise. For me, uh, when I see uh, that patch, and there's there are a lot of Buffalo Soldiers MC patches, um, but when I when I see the Buffalo Soldiers, I always feel you know, heroic, like, like they're like heroic just because of the, the, the mighty name that they carry, um, for, um, uh, the, the, the folks that, that, you know, went through what, 
what they went through on the Plains Wars. And, you know, the Plains Wars were horrible. You know, I read stories about Buffalo soldiers, like in Texas, that were, um, uh, there was two Buffalo soldiers that were uh, tarred and feathered and run out of town because they were black. Uh, but these guys were not any kind of punks, man. Uh, they went back to their regiment, came back, and shot up the whole damn town, killing uh, two of the, the white townsfolks that had uh, done those things to them. So, I mean, they was out there. They wasn't just a whistling Dixie. They was out there getting it. Um, so it, it, took, it took a lot to tame the West. So, anyway. Over there in, um, uh, what's it called? Australia. <laughs> Man, uh, Australia is just an amazing place. It's like Australia is the wild, wild west. Uh, Australia is the wild, wild west, man. There, There's no, the wild, wild west in America is gone, okay? The, the real wild, wild west is Australia. If you're going to be in a bike club world, uh, Australia is the place, bro. They, they, they be getting down over there. They, they, I don't think, I don't think our motorcycle clubs have anything on them. You might say bikey and laugh. <laughs> bikey, what a crazy name, bro. Them cats will take like, they'll take our bikers lunch money over here. These guys are for real with it. In the latest story from over in the land down under, bro, this 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 uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'm in the wrong. Listen, I I need a different motorcycle club business because if this is how they're doing it, I want some. Okay, hidden bikey bunker, and and when you when you talk about bikies, so they have bikers over there too. But bikies are their 1% variant, okay? And I know in America, bikey sounds like a lame term, but I have come to find out you say bikey with respect over there. You don't, <laughs> bikey, <laughs> no. Mm -mm. You get your tongue slapped out your mouth, okay? So know that going in, that these guys are fierce. They kill people. They're tough. And it looks like they're rich. I'm I'm so jealous right here. Hidden bikey bunker found in five million dollar bust across uh, NSW in Queensland. What does NSW stand for? Um, I don't know. New South Wales. I don't know. I don't know what NSW stands for. Somebody help me. Where's my where, Where's my my club brother from? I I actually have a club brother from Australia. Is this Evil Kokorski? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Evil Kokorski. I haven't seen him in so long. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this, 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 I don't know what NSW stands for yet, but uh, I think it might be new. Okay. King James says new South Wales. So there you go. And about almost $5 million worth of drugs have been seized and more than 60 people have been arrested during a police operation to crack down on major crime on a major crime syndicate in Queensland. And Oh, here it is. New South Wales. Come on, John. <laughs> police from New South Wales and Southeast Queensland targeted criminal networks in Northern rivers and gold coast border region over the two week period of operation Viking. Now, what do these guys come up with these names? Authorities attended properties in Grafton, Tweed Heads, and Ewingsdale, uh, Balambil Heights, and Carrera. Man, these names. So you know they're not supposed to be like having no guns over there. And this looks like, like <laughs> I don't know, but those bullets are big as hell. Is this a, like a 30, 30 or something? Uh, those are some big as hell bullets. Do you see those? They, they look like, uh, M50. Look at these Rolex watches, bro. Like your boys ain't doing bad over here. 
this is the gold one. This is the all gold one. You know, the these ones right here can be like 100K or better. This looks more like the um, stainless steel variant. You could get into these for about two grand. This is the one. This is gold, too. This, this one costs a little bit more. I think this is the presidential, the big one. But look at these. They, they had a few of them over there. I think I'll wear this one. It's Tuesday. I be in the stainless steel one. Uh, I like, uh, I personally like the Omega watch a little better. I, I, the Omegas are what I have, but I ain't got three of them. Uh, officers located more than 40 firearms. Uh, and you, they tell me, <laughs> they tell me guns are illegal. They're bull BS more than. So this is, this is this right here. If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have them. Just, just let you, let you know right there, bro. Uh, officers located more than 40 firearms. There you go, right there. Everybody's got a firearm except the regular people. <laughs> Not in Georgia. More than $150,000 in cash, luxury cars, and jewelry, and a variety of prohibited drugs, including methamphetamine, cocaine, GHB, and cannabis. I don't know what GHB is. Police believe the number of drugs seized has a combined estimated street value of 4.5 mil plus a half a mil and other stuff. Come on, people. Come on. I, I, I'm, I need to be a bikey. I'm not I'm, I'm something I'm not doing correctly. Of note, during the rage, police found two hydroponic cannabis grow labs in Carrera and 2.5 kilograms of cannabis. Bro, your boys was getting down. They also found and seized chemicals and equipment used to make drugs at Sealands near Grafton. New South Wales Police Acting Assistant Commissioner Jason Weinstein added an underground bunker used for Mongols bikey gang meetings was also discovered in the Grafton area. It was a residential property, and they had created a bunker and inside that bunker was Mongols memorabilia. There was a bar, a motorbike. I guess this is the bunker. This does not look like no bunker. This right here is really, really nice. It's it. Look at that. It's beautiful in there. They got a a bar. That that bar is that that bar is way nicer than the Dragon's Lair. Okay, I'm gonna have to put me a nice bar in. I can't have just everybody's got a nice bar with me i can't, can't have that you know somebody help me build my dragon's lair bar please it was a location where the mongols in that particular chapter believed they were free from police activity where they could congregate talk about business and socialize yes it was a bunker you should be free down there he added about 40 percent of bikey groups are operating in nsw northern region the problem is quite large uh, you know, they always take their stuff and 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 post it. I don't know why they do that uh, to show you that they're they're working. Uh, Weinstein said 13 people in SW were arrested during the operation. Meanwhile, Queensland Police Assistant Commissioner Catherine Innes said 54 people were arrested. It wasn't solely to arrest offenders. It was to gain a significant intelligence briefing about what the crime landscape is in the northern borders and Queenland and what correction they have to transnational crime into titles and what connection they have to transnational crime entities. There we go. In titles, entities, Weinstein said, uh, and they've got machine guns and, and automatic semi-automatic pistols. Winston said the operation has put a dent in illegal activities between NSW and Queensland. The northern border zone has the state's largest OMCG. So we, they don't call them OMCs. They call them OMCGs, Outlaw Motorcycle Club Gang, 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 gangs. You know, they use that word. Population with a significant crossover between NSW and QLD. What is QLD? That must be another area. We know criminal organizations were establishing themselves across the North Coast because of its lucrative drug market and a perceived idea that the area is relatively free of scrutiny from law enforcement. Well, I guess they were wrong about that one. Look at this. These They got the nice gun. Is this a plastic gun? This looks like, like a plastic gun made in one of those three, 3D things. 
Wow. That I've never even seen a gun like that. That that is cool. Um looking. It's kind of ominous, isn't it? Uh, they got some nice looking guns there. These are gun seas. I'm confident that following these two weeks, that perception has changed that we are, we are out here. Ennis said the operation should serve as a warning to anyone looking to carry out illegal crime activity along the border. Bro, I'm told that guns are outlawed there. It ain't looking like it. It's looking like they got every kind of gun they need to do whatever the hell it is they need to do. All right. Here's your here's your gun outlawed state. So, okay. So you guys take this back to the lefties that want to take your guns. I want you to take this back. We know that Canada, I'm not Canada, Australia is not one of those places where you can just roam about freely with your guns. Yet, here in this anti-gun place, they found more than 40 firearms in, in, in one uh, bunker alone. So there you go. There you go. Give up your guns if you want to. Everybody won't be giving up theirs. There'll be a lot of folks... Still running around, capable, and you'll be the only fool incapable of protecting yourself. I'm just saying. I'm just. QLD stands for Queensland. Thank you, Queensland. Thank you. See, my people know everything. Uh, I wonder if I could grow for profit now that Florida has legalized pot. Yeah, no, no, you won't be able to because you got to have money to get in the game. They legalize pot for rich people to grow it. Uh, if you've got, if you've got a, a background, a criminal background, have been arrested one time for speeding or whatever, uh, they ain't letting you. Uh, uh, they ain't letting you in into the grow lab industry. Oh wow! Okay, so that I believe, my friends, is close to my hour. Um, uh. They just throw a spider of death at you. Uh, man. Uh, and also someone said, I, I heard you can't have the patches either. I think there's a part of Australia where you can't have patches and you can't meet more than two people and all that stuff. And then there's a part of Australia where you can. It's what I think I've been told. So you, you can um, be where you are over there uh just scrolling through the uh comments good morning black dragon from war gorilla from the road gorillas mc las vegas what's up war gorilla you're gonna be over in uh La 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 louisiana this weekend for the uh, roundup love to see anybody if you've got my book and you want me to sign it bring it to the roundup and i'll be happy to sign it for you um just so you guys, you know, for those who, who may want my autograph uh, or picture or whatever, uh, absolutely, I'll be more than happy to do that for you. Black Dragon's first history lesson that I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> Black Dragon, first history lesson that I didn't fall asleep to you might have found uh, your next job. Oh, thank you, Deborah. That's, that's sweet. I'm a historian. Kinda. 24th was disbanded in 1975 after the Vietnam War. Thank you, Rick C. I didn't know that. Uh, which I imagine it would be because wasn't it an all-black unit all the way up until then? But gosh, it's interesting that they didn't disband it until 1975. That's kind of sad. Fighting 99th was a colored regiment. Uh, didn't know that. Roosevelt formed the Rough Riders in the saloon at Minger Hotel. I think there was some... Uh, uh, black soldiers in the Rough Riders, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, don't forget, it wasn't a good thing killing our people for the white man, says Art Garcia. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that that too. A regiment in Harlem, New York City, was all colored too. Okay, so I got my people on here. They'd be knowing their history. 
I feel proud to have served in the U.S. Marine Corps. I served with plenty of U.S. Army CAV units. Awesome people, says Sito the Great. Man, I'm seeing all these people I don't see a lot. What's up, Sito the Great, man? It's good to see you. Uh, let's get it right, Black Dragon. It's Tatanka, not Buffalo or Bison. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. See, you can't you can't be off your game here. Uh, yes, Derek Washington, Tatanka, it is. Uh, you can't even be off your game. Uh, a little bit. The American Wild Wild West is avocado toast and coffee shops on every block uh, these days. Pumpkin spice lattes in the falls, as Pablo and Charlie see. Uh, man, so it's good to have everybody on here. Uh, so much participation. Uh, really appreciated you all this morning. Uh, I got to get out of here and get on the road. Um, I will be broadcasting from the road. And listen, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm just letting everybody know now. Okay, uh, and 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 big cell and anybody damned else. I'm taking my RV. Uh, I'll be towing the motorcycle behind the RV. I don't want to hear any S H I T about it. Okay, because I'm being bougie this weekend. I'm not sleeping on the ground with y'all. I ain't do. I've done it too many times. Pulling lice out of my <laughs> out of my out of my sleeping bag and stuff. No. Mm -mm. No, no, I'm I'm old now. I want to lay up and let my nuts sweat under the air conditioning, and take a shower. I got a washer and dryer in my RV. I've got a refrigerator. I can take my, I can I can pull my grill. Come on, man. I might not even get on my motorcycle. I might just have it sitting out there for you to see it. Just so you know, I got one. Okay. I, I'm not going to be any different than any of the other no loads that are going to be going towing their stuff. I won't be the only one towing, you know. There'll be all kind of non bikers towing. At least I'm a biker biker. I've, I've ridden there many times before. In the Navy, we used to say you're only as good as your last. Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> so. I know there are some of you who will say, he's no biker. <laughs> and you'll be right. I'm no biker this weekend. I am a recreational rider this weekend. I'm a cyclist, a voyeur of you bikers I'll be living vicariously through as you roll down in your packs and I watch you pass me. I'll be waving from the Black Dragon's wagon Hey, it's good to see y'all. I wish I were out there. I wish I was I wish I was out there riding to on to on the great highway, the great beyond, rolling with the wind in my face at Oh my god, through this heat wave? Hell no. It's like 95, 99, 100, 105. And you know when it's that degrees on that asphalt, it's like 115. People popping Goldwing Tiger. And you know why you're popping Goldwing Tiger? You guys need to know this since you're going to be traveling like that. Do not overload the motorcycle. Do not overload the motorcycle. Motorcycle tires are rated for a certain weight, a certain speed a certain load, okay? Your motorcycle will have inside of it, the owner's manual, the weight rating for your motorcycle. Your tires also have a weight and speed rating. That's why you guys buying those <laughs> uh, Schneekos, whatever they're called, uh, tires and putting them on your motorcycle, like, are you serious? Like tires? So what you guys will do is get your fat ass on a gold wing and like uh my gold wing has a rating of like um what was it 427 pounds something like that and i weighed 350 at that time i, I was 365 so you're 365 your wife is 215 and you put 150 200 pounds of luggage on that motorcycle and then you want to ride it 
at 90 miles an hour for eight hours across the desert on the highway that's 115 degrees on tires that are two years old. And you wonder why you have a high-speed blowout. Know that your bike can carry as much as you put on it, but that doesn't mean it's rated for that, especially at those big highway speeds you guys want to do. So load your bike properly, have the proper air pressure in your tires, uh, roll responsibly, understand that that freeway is hot, maybe hotter than usual. These are the things you got to know. What? A judge sentenced Brittany to nine years in prison. Brittany Griner got nine years in prison for a little cannabis oil. You are effing kidding me. Wow. Let me, let me bring this up real quick. Hold on. Really? Well, damn, they threw the book at her. Nine years in prison for some cannabis oil, hashish or whatever the hell it was, oil. No, but they're gonna train a gun, they're gonna trade a gun dealer for her. She's she's gonna be traded for a guns dealer. And why? What does she do that we need to put a death dealer? back on the street so he can go kill some more people. She is so important that we need to put a person that sells guns illegally to countries to kill thousands of people. You can only assume he's going back in the business. We need to trade that for a basketball player who couldn't follow the rules. Couldn't follow the rules of, of, and Hell, if it was you or me over there, I promise you they wouldn't be trading no arms dealer for us. But trying to elicit the response of a certain population so that you can get their votes, you'll put a arms dealer out on the street. A person whose nickname is Doctor of Death. Shin, Shinnecock tires. That's what Shadow says. Black Dragon got the grill and cold beer. Oh, do I not need to bring my grill? Is that what you're saying? I don't need to put my grill on the RV? Is that what you're saying, uh, Pink? Because if I don't have to put it on the RV, I won't. But I was going to bring it because, you know, I, I, you know, hey, I'm, I'm bringing the house. <laughs> uh, by Russian standards, that ain't much of a sentence. Well, damn. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't be breaking the law over there. Uh, leave the house with good tread. Come home with a uh, cord showing. Uh, that's when you went on a trip. Uh, Goose calls it uh, the Babe Mobile. The U.S. government is the biggest illegal arms dealer in the world. Oh, man. Are we going to go there? Because you are right. Uh, let her deal with the consequences of her actions. People say four police are charged with the death of Breonna Taylor. When did that happen? Really? Did that happen? Man, I'm just not getting any of the news. Uh, exactly. She has nine years to consider how horrible America isn't. Uh, you guys are mad at her because she wouldn't stand for the flag. Yeah. Um, listen, I, I fought so that people could make up their minds whether they stand for the flag or not. Um, so I'm not mad at you if you don't stand for the flag. Um I used to hoist that flag every morning uh, on the back of my submarine. I didn't get an opportunity not to stand for the flag. You got to run your ass out and you got, man, it happens at eight o'clock every morning, not 8.03. <laughs> you you got to be up there in your dress blues, uh, not your wrinkled dress blues from underneath your rack, your dress blues or your dress whites. And you run to the end of the uh, submarine where you almost slip and fall in the water. And you you stand at attention and they begin playing colors. And you run to the flag and you move smartly. 
you clip it on and you run it up as fast as you can. You, no, no pussyfooting. You, you hoist the flag. The flag comes down slowly, but it goes up at top speed as fast as you can move it. You hoist that flag up, you tie it off, you step back, and you stand at attention. And then at the end of colors, you bring that hand down. You do an about face, and you march off smartly. So I give a damn less about what your issues are. My brothers and I, we fought under that flag. Just my two cents on that. It was the anthem she had a problem with. She won't be. Uh, she won't be hearing. Oh, it was the anthem, was it? Well, the, the anthem is is prob is especially when you get into the second and third uh, verses. It is problematic. Freedom is a gift. It's not free. You have to choose to live it. The real freedom, sons. Go. Got to go to work. Yeah, G six. Me too. I got to get out of here. Goose, I sold one of those in college by posting it on the dorm bulletin board. Okay, you guys are talking about something else. 5,000 plus members as of 2019, 140 chapters. Well, you're late on that, Milton. We we discovered that a, a while back. you just now putting that up? Okay, that's uh, it for me. That's it. I'm out. Uh, this is, we're right at an hour. Appreciate y'all. Uh, looky here. Um... Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. You can see the scrolling on the bottom. Like, 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 share, 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 subscribe, 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 if you wouldn't mind. Just share it to somebody you know who needs to do it right now. It's not hard. You can find Black Dragon Biker TV on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, and here on YouTube. So go to all my places and like us. Order my books, Prospects Bible, uh, Sergeant at Arms Bible, President's Bible. Uh, uh, the uh, um, what else do I have? Prospect's Bible, Sergeant Arms Bible, President's Bible, and Public Relations Officers Bible, and Prospect's Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs. These are the plethora of books I've written for you to understand how to be better in this lifestyle. President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. I have actually six chronicles to write here. But right now we have Chronicle One. All right. So do that for me. Join our podcast, The Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos. The Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos, where you get your podcasts, is where we are. So um, go check us out on our podcast. Download us and listen to us in your car or your truck or your 18 wheeler while you're traveling. We'd appreciate that. Please join us on our Discord server. The Discord server uh, link is below. You can get us on the Discord server and check us out. Uh, we are shutting down, finally, the GoFundMe page for the North Shore chapter. We appreciate all the donations. If you still want to get some in, uh, Black Sabbath MC North Shore chapter fundraiser. Absolutely appreciate that. And we're so thankful for all those that have given to this. Uh, thank you so much. You can get me at Black Dragon at BlackSabbathMC.com, Black Dragon at BlackSabbathMC.com. And my phone number in the studio here is 404-692-0336, right here in Atlanta, 404-692-0336. No, I am not really in an alley, in case you didn't. Never mind. Um, if you need, um, If you need some help, in your motorcycle club endeavors and you want to talk to me on the phone, this is how you do it. Clarity.fm forward slash black dash dragon. Clarity.fm forward slash black hyphen dragon. You can go here and set up an appointment to talk to me about whatever your issues are, club issues, conflict resolution, crisis management, whatever issue you have. If you need a, a independent third party to judge a fight between the club members and the founder or whatever it is you guys are doing. I've been doing this about 30 years and I might be able to help. Maybe not, but you won't know if you don't give it a, give me a call. All right. That's all of my housekeeping and all of my sales pitches and all that kind of stuff. I'm getting ready to get on the road, man. Pray for me. And, uh, 
We want to send our condolences to um, the Buffalo soldiers over there um, for the loss of your club brother. And, um, and uh, uh, know that um, we uh, stand against violence and um, in solidarity for life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm Black Dragon, your former submarine sailor. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. Come check me out at the Roundup and say hello. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. Come by the Black Sabbath uh, campground. We'll have, we'd love to see you guys over there uh, at our campground and uh, say hello to you or whatever. And, uh, and, and fellowship with you because that's what this is. All right. Thank you, man. Have a good day and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. Get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book. Biker news, you can trust. Biker news, you can trust. Biker news, you can trust. Biker news, you can trust.